went the trolley. Ding, 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 went the bell. What about Judy Garland? For me, of course, The Wizard of Oz, but I also have very strong memories of being, uh, I guess, 10 when her TV show was on, and on, I think it was Friday nights, and I was mesmerized by her. I was mesmerized by her. And, you know, she would sing a lot of sad ballads, and there wasn't a lot of flashy camera movement or anything, but I, I watched her and was fascinated by her. And I remember at the end of one show, she sang the Battle Hymn of the Republic, and I, I just, I, I, my flesh, I was just vibrating by the end of it. That genetic thing that gay men have spoke to me, mm. and, I, and I couldn't explain it. I never got her until maybe 20 years ago, um, but I went to see her at the palace, and that's when I decided, okay, I, I don't get it. I don't understand this audience who are tearing their hair out and screaming. Why is this happening? She's not singing all that well. And but, it took 30 years with you to like. But, and let's make it clear when you it. saw her at the palace, it was the 1967 comeback that wasn't really, she wasn't in top form. Right. It wasn't the great return. It was, um, William Goldman talks about it in the season that she was, it just, she wasn't there. It, so, it what you would have gotten it if it had been Judy at the Palace, mm -hmm. but it was Judy at the Palace. The other palace. Okay. Um, Diamonds are a girl's best friend. Carol Channing came through in Lorelei, and she was hilarious. I was laughing from start to finish. She was every bit of business was brilliant. And at the time, I had a really horrible laugh that was kind of a honk. So you couldn't help but notice my laugh if you were paying attention. And at the end of the show, I'm getting up to go, and this woman comes down the aisle, and she says, Miss um, Channing would like to meet you. Would you like to come with me? And I said, sure, absolutely. So I went backstage and Charles, her husband, was there and and Carol went, oh, it's so lovely to meet you. You know, I spotted you almost immediately. You were laughing at everything I said and it was just a joy. I insist that you come, when the next time I have an opening in New York, I insist that you come as my guest on opening night. You would be fantastic. I would just love it if you were there because you totally understand everything I'm doing. And I said, oh, I would love that. I would, uh, it would be great, an, an honor, because I adore you. And, you know, I saw Thoroughly Modern Millie a d million times, and you're my favorite, and blah, 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 blah. And, well, yeah, you know, let me, I have to give you a little something. I only give it to very special people. And she reached in the drawer, and she took out a diamond ring. And she went, here's a diamond, so I hope you remember this afternoon for all time. And I said, I... Absolutely will. Thank you so much. This means so much. And then escorted me out. What I loved when Carol Channing passed away people was the number of people that had a personal by. story of a personal encounter with Carol Channing. And that's because she toured and she was devoted to her fans and devoted to her career. This is a woman that made America her friend. Jerry Lewis. He appeared in Damn Yankees on Broadway, and I then took it out on tour post-Broadway. So I became his producer after the fact. I didn't produce the show, but I bought the show and then ran it uh, for pace. Usually when you're touring a musical, you'll carry your conductor, lead keyboard, percussion, and maybe one or two other instruments, depending on what the orchestration most needs. Uh, Jerry wanted me to add a clarinet to the mix. And I said, well, that's an odd one. I've never, in all these musicals I've done, here's a list of 70 tours, um, we've never carried a clarinet. And I know it's part of the mix of this particular orchestration, but I don't think of it as primary. 
And he said, well, let me show you some videos. And he played me some videos of him doing his act in Las Vegas. And he'd say, listen, listen to who's supporting me. Listen to who's getting me through that song. And I said, oh, yeah, well, yeah, clarinet, I guess. I mean, it's kind of buried in there, but I'm okay. And he gave me a bunch of supporting evidence as to why clarinet was important to him. As, as an old vaudevillian, he would lean on a certain sound coming out of the pit. And for him, he said, that's the clarinet. And in the course of Damien Yankees, it is a material part of the score, but it's just, to me, was never the lead sound that I would pick up. But he said, that's what he leans on. So I finally caved after hours and hours in his suite at the Waldorf Astoria. And it was only six months into the tour that I learned that his personal dresser, and the star always gets to choose his own dresser who travels with him, the dresser's boyfriend was a clarinetist and said, Jerry, I'm not going to tour with you unless you get my boyfriend a job. So I, I just felt so had. <sighs> but, <laughs> but he loved that dresser so much that he did the research. He edited videos and he had stuff to show me. Don't cry for me, Argentina. She auditioned for rock and roll the first 5,000 years. And we offered her a role. I think it was like to play one and understudy two. And she said, no, 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 I got, I got bigger plans. <laughs> well, she did. Now, okay, it, but it was Vinnie Liff. She said, I got better, pl better plans. And Vinnie Liff, who was the casting director, took her out into the alley outside the Belasco Theater and said, I'm, we are offering you the Grace Slick track, the Tina Turner track, and the blah, 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 blah track. And this is a Broadway musical directed conceived and directed by Joe Layton. This is, this is as good as it's gonna get. This is thrilling. This is a major, major break. And she went, no, you know, I really, I'm gonna do my own songs, my own kind of albums and stuff. That's really what I think I wanna do. Thanks. Wow. Why don't you come in and audition? Yeah, it, and wow. <clears throat> she's really good. And then like a few years later, he, when Like a Virgin had, you know, he went, I wanted her for rock and roll the first 5,000 years. Look what happened to her. I said, sad, isn't it? You were terrible. <laughs> <laughs> she could have been on Broadway. <laughs> wow. Why is it always Miss Marmalstein? Miss Marmalstein. We had dinner at a table next to her in a restaurant out in the Cotswolds, and it was a, a lovely five-star inn. We were the only two rooms booked in the hotel, and there was this, like, 14-table restaurant, and they sat... Us two and, and James she and her Brolin husband. and Barbara Streisand there. side by side, and well, Bill, Billy had been facing the door, and he said, "Don't look back, but it's Barbara, Barbara Streisand." And, and, like, and he does that like twice a year anyway, so I didn't pay any ah. attention to it. <laughs> That's <laughs> funny. Barbara Streisand, Barbara Streisand, and he went, "Billy, please come on." And then he heard her say, "Here, here, is this where we're going to sit?" <laughs> <laughs> and he so and he went. <laughs> oh my gosh. She was on the phone most of the time. Oh, with her broker. With her broker. And, and she, uh, she said, he's going to have a salad, uh, the, the green salad, but with the burger. And she, had, she ordered for him, and, and he just kind of sat there. And she was on the phone with the broker. And we stopped talking because we had to hear everything she had to say. <laughs> and after about 10 minutes or 12 minutes, we both went, okay, we just have to leave because we can't. This is stupid. We're not. It's just. It's ridiculous. <laughs> wow. So that's the only Streisand story we've yeah, got, but we like it. I think it. that's it. We like yeah. it. <laughs> Nobody 